So I know you remember this elitist rich snob who in 2019 was basically everywhere, and he was popular because he was floating the idea of running for president as an independent, and he was basically threatening to sabotage the 2020 election in favor of Donald Trump if Bernie Sanders became the Democratic Party's nominee. He hated Bernie Sanders so much because he wanted to keep his taxes at a lower rate that he was willing to jump in as an independent and take votes away from Bernie Sanders, all because he didn't want his taxes to go up by a little bit insufferable, right? He had no policy ideas. He just thought that the Democratic Party was too left. It's a joke. So he kind of went away and faded into obscurity and he stepped down, wasn't the CEO of Starbucks, but now he's back. Once again, he's the CEO of Starbucks and he's just as insufferable as he's always been. So he held a meeting with Starbucks workers in Long Beach, California. Uh, there were some executives there to my understanding and workers and the issue of unionization came up. And this really short clip gives you a sense of the way he feels about unionization. And you're probably not going to be too surprised with what he has to say. Now, here's where it gets a little sensitive because I've been coached a little bit, but I do want to talk about something pretty serious. We can't ignore what is happening in the country as it relates to companies throughout the country being assaulted in many ways by the threat of unionization. Now, look, I'm not surprised to hear an elitist prick like Howard Schultz say that, but I mean, he took the hyperbole and turned it up to a 12. Corporations throughout the country are being assaulted in many ways by the threat of unionization. Why do you feel as if unionization is a threat, Howard? What is it about unions that scares you so much? What? He knows that it's going to cut into their profits because if there are unions throughout his company, then workers are going to get more, more money, better treatment, and that scares him. He likes to exploit his workers. He likes to take advantage of them, hence why he views this company-wide unionization effort as an assault. It, it's ridiculous. But thankfully, workers are just done. Now, one worker named Madison Hall had the opportunity to attend this meeting at the last moment. Their manager had invited them, and somehow they got to attend, and this person did not take kindly to what Howard Schultz was saying, and actually stood up to Howard Schultz and confronted him about his company-wide union busting effort. As Jordan Zacharin of A More Perfect Union writes, tensions flared during a meeting between Starbucks CEO Howard Schultz and workers in Long Beach, California on Friday, closing out a tumultuous first week for the returning executive. Madison Hall, a 25-year-old barista and union organizer, says that the 68-year-old billionaire repeatedly bristled at and cut off their questions about Starbucks' handling of the growing union movement within the company. If you hate Starbucks so much, why don't you go somewhere else, Schultz told Hall, they recalled. You were constantly telling us that you are not anti-union. You're constantly saying that you respect our right to unionize, Hall says they told Schultz. We're not going to talk about that, Schultz replied. The friction continued to grow. Hall says that when they mentioned the several federal complaints filed by the NLRB against the company for illegally harassing and firing pro-union workers, a number of other baristas began murmuring, seemingly unaware of the charges. Hall says they tried to explain the NLRB's actions, but was again cut off by Schultz. A challenge over whether Starbucks offered the best benefits in the retail industry was also interrupted. Then he went into a long rant about the history of Starbucks and how he used to be poor, Hall reports. Hall says they pursued the line of questioning only to encounter more hostility. I said, you say you're not anti-union, but on July 1st, 2021, Starbucks was found guilty of retaliation in Philadelphia, Hall relays. That was when he got super defensive and cut me off, saying, we're not talking about this. It was very, very bad. He was getting very aggressive with me, Hall adds. And then he went on another rant and he told everyone else that he's sorry that this was brought up, that this this isn't what the event was about, and he had his hand pointed towards me like I was a problem. Wow. So that's what happens when you challenge a rich person. People like Howard Schultz, billionaires like him, they surround themselves with people who just affirm all of their bad elitist beliefs. So when they're actually challenged, when the peasants actually stand up and they make the case for themselves, he doesn't know how to react, so he just mauls. 
what a fucking child Howard Schultz is. But this is predictable behavior. Every single CEO is fighting unionization. You know, Amazon is fighting it. Starbucks is fighting it. We did a video not too long ago about Starbucks. This was referenced by Madison just firing organizers of a union at one particular location. You know, they pressured a manager to crack down on the unionization effort. The manager refused to comply. They fired that manager, brought in a union buster, and then they just fired the employees. What they were doing was they were trying to basically dissuade these uh, organizers from forming the union. So once they found out about this union, they, they started to cut their hours, schedule them for like nothing, bring them in, not schedule them enough so they couldn't take a break. It was ridiculous. Like they were doing everything they possibly could to break up this union. And um, this is what happens when you confront the CEO about it. Now, the NLRB violations are absolutely extensive and more perfect union. They did a video talking about this. So here's a brief clip from a fuller, fuller video that I will share down below in the link uh, to the description box. But um, take a look at all of these violations from Starbucks, a company that supposedly isn't union busting. In the last few months, there have been at least 63 different allegations made by employees of Starbucks, which contend the company has engaged in illegal activity against them. These unfair labor practice charges, which have been filed with the National Labor Relations Board, span across the entire country, from Buffalo to Seattle and everywhere in between. Phoenix, Memphis, Austin, Denver, Peoria, Knoxville, Kansas City, Jacksonville, Santa Cruz, and many more. The pace and velocity of these charges against Starbucks is increasing. More than half of the total NLRB filings on Starbucks illegal activities have come in the last month alone. We comb through these documents. Again and again, the charges made by Starbucks employees are the same. Violations alleged of Section 8 of the National Labor Relations Act, which asserts that an employer may not interfere with, restrain, or coerce employees. For months, More Perfect Union has revealed stories of Starbucks executives pummeling their workers with baseless fears and propaganda to smear unions. What Starbucks Workers United called a blatant shock and awe campaign, intended to psychologically punish prospective pro-union workers. Starbucks subjected workers to captive audience meetings and threatened to close stores. And the company even fired a popular manager because she questioned the company's tactics. Starbucks workers say the company is intentionally spying on their union gatherings, questioning employees about union activities. Workers are being threatened with job loss, warned that they'll be discharged or retaliated against if they side with the union. And recently, more and more organizing employees are stating that they have in fact been outright fired as a result of their pro-union activities. So that's what Madison Hall confronted Howard Schultz about. This is a company that is breaking the law. They're breaking the law. Workers have a right to organize. Workers have a right to form a union, but companies like Starbucks and Amazon, they go out of their way to do everything to break up these unions. And even if that means breaking the law, they don't care because anything that they might be fined that pales into comparison to the cost of just treating their workers fairly, giving them livable wages, offering them better benefits, that is more expensive than just breaking the law and paying fines. So that's why they do this. So, you know, this is a company-wide effort, as I stated earlier, and more and more stores are going to fight for unionization. All it took was one store to unionize, and then, like Domino's, stores across the country started to, uh, to fight for unionization. And I hope that the same thing happens with Amazon. Not too long ago, we talked about how Christian Smalls led the first successful unionization of a warehouse, and, you know, I hope that more follow. But with Starbucks, you know, the same thing happened. All it took was one, and we see the way that the company is reacting. The CEO is melting down at the mere mention of unions and literally calls it an assault. No, it's not an assault. It's workers finally standing up and demanding to be treated fairly, saying that they're no longer going to accept exploitative practices, and they want to be treated with dignity, not like robots. So, you know, I'm absolutely uh, proud of that worker for standing up and confronting Howard Schultz, but I wouldn't be surprised if we found out that Madison was fired not too long from now because they absolutely have a history of retaliating against union organizers. So because Madison right there got the attention of the CEO, if they were fired, I would not be surprised. And I hope that that's not the case, but you just, you can't trust these union busters. They will go to great lengths to try to dissuade people from forming unions. So if Howard Schultz can make an example out of Madison, that's what he's going to try to do because he's a bad person and he wants to save every single penny that he can. So he wants to stiff his workers and break up unionization efforts. But it goes to show you how afraid they are 
of these unions. They're fighting unions because they know that unions are effective. That's why they go to such great lengths to dissuade their workers and, you know, intimidate and retaliate against workers who try to form unions. It just means that you're winning and you have to push that much harder.